Today I'm going to teach you about something called coroutines inside Unity and coroutines is a way for us to do many different things inside our game. We can prevent certain actions to happen on top of each other inside the same frame. For example, if I want to teleport my player but I'm also moving him at the same time then I can actually accidentally overwrite the teleportation that I do inside my code. We can create a time delay, which is something that is very popular for people to use. So if I want to do something inside the game and then after a certain amount of seconds, I want something to happen. For example, shooting an enemy and then you know a death animation needs to happen before the object gets destroyed. Then I can using a core team actually go in and say, oh, play the death animation and then wait one second for the animation to stop and then actually destroy the game objects. We can also create a sequence of events inside our game. So if I have a player that is walking and all of a sudden he hits a trigger that triggers a boss to jump down from a mountain, then the boss might have an animation that needs to happen where he roars or something and he gets his weapons out. You know, a bunch of different animations that needs to play in sequence before we actually allow for the boss to start fighting the, the player. Then we can do that using coroutines as well. Coroutines can also be used in order to increase your performance slightly inside your game. So let's say you have a bunch of enemies that need to do something specific inside the game, but there's no need for it to be called every single update. Then we can use coroutines in order to skip certain frames or something to sort of stretch out the time that we call these functions inside our code. So in that sort of sense, nothing really overheats because we have so many functions running at the same time. We can use a coroutine to you know load in assets before we actually start up the game so players can actually see what is happening on the screen because it would be kind of annoying to have the player load into a big game and then when they load in they start seeing all these assets popping in because they're still loading in um, so you can use coroutines to to sort of prevent that as well again a coroutine can be used for many different things inside your game and in this video we're just sort of going to focus on how to create one and how to maybe add a time delay with it and then you can just sort of look into all these different usages on your own if you want to do that so with that said, you can see that I have a very tiny example in front of me here. I have a player and then I have a teleport location, which is the yellow marker over here. This is not something we can move. This is just to indicate that this is where the player can teleport to. So essentially, if I were to play the game, you'll notice that I have a player controller script attached to my player, which is down here. You can't, oh, yep, yep, you can actually see it. Uh, a player controller that allows for me to move my player. And if I press space, I teleport over to the yellow box. And essentially what I want to do here is I want to make sure that when I press space to teleport, that my player doesn't get overridden with the movement of the player. In this case here, it doesn't really happen, but you might end up in a situation where things like that might happen. So what I'll do is I'll go inside my scripts just so you can see what exactly I have in here. This is just a very basic player movement script. Uh, just using add force, I'm picking up on you know the rigid body and then I'm moving my player using the rigid body. And what I'm essentially doing here is I also added in a Boolean called disable movement. And inside my fixed update down here, you can actually see that I allow for my player movements to get disabled if disabled movement is set to true. I do also have a very simple player teleport script, which is attached to my player. And in this script, I simply went in and said that I wanted to create a field, which is going to contain a game object, which in this case here is going to be the yellow box that I have over here. So I, I can grab this box and get the location of it. So inside the update method down here, I simply said that if I press the space key, then I want to take my player and move the position of the player to the position of that particular game object that we added up in here. So, you know, inside my Unity Inspector, inside my player, um, at the very bottom here, you can't really see it right now. You can see down here, I have a teleport location. I just simply took my game object, dragged it down there to get the location of that game object, which is the yellow square here. And that's essentially what I have in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go below here and I'm going to create a I enumerator, which is going to allow for me to skip frames inside the game. So I'm going to say we have an I E numerator. You can actually see it comes up with a suggestion there. We're also going to go ahead and give it a name. In this case, we're just going to call it teleport delay parentheses and curly brackets. Now an I enumerator is actually something that belongs to the .NET framework and it's not something that's built into the Unity code, so to speak. 
And essentially, this is a function type that allows for us to iterate through something, you know, numbers or something. In this case here, it's going to be frames. And it allows for us to go through frames and then add a delay in between the frames if that's what we want to do. And you can actually see that we're getting an error message here. And that's because we haven't added in a yield return type. Uh, that could, for example, be to just skip a single frame or we want to skip a bunch of seconds or something. Um, and because we haven't added that in, because that is essentially what we need to use this particular method for. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can say we have a yield return null, like so. And then you can see the error message go, goes away because right now I've actually told it to skip a frame inside the game. Of course, right now it doesn't do anything with the frame that we skipped, but we, we're just skipping a frame right now. So let's say I want to actually teleport the player. I can take this code up here and I can just sort of take it out. I can move it after my yield return down here inside my teleport delay. So what I can now do is I can actually disable the player's movement, then actually teleport the player here after one frame. And then after another frame, I can then enable back on the player movement. So I can go in and say that I have a player. So I'm just going to go up here and say that we have a player controller type um, field. We're going to call this one underscore player controller. And then I'm just going to create a start method so we can actually attach the script to this field here because right now this player controller field is actually empty. We don't have the actual script grabbed yet. So we're going to go in and actually do that. So we're going to say start and create a start method. And then I'm just simply going to say player controller is equal to get component. And we can do that because these two scripts are attached to the same game object. So we can just go in and grab it because it's on the same game object here. And then I'm just simply going to say, want to grab the player controller. So now the player controller script is right now attached to the field, so we can actually use it. And then I'm just simply gonna go down inside my teleport delay and say player controller dot underscore disable movement is going to be equal to true. And this basically means that right now I'm disabling the player movement, so I can't move my player. We can actually test this out. So if I were to now call upon this coroutine here. I can go inside my update and say start coroutine and then simply paste in the method that we just created. So I'm going to say teleport delay. So now when I press space, it's going to run this coroutine down here, which is going to, you know, skip frames and, and do what we told it to inside the game. So what should happen here is when I press play and press the space key, it should actually disable my player movement. So now I can actually move my player. I hit space and then it teleports and I can't move around my player anymore because I disabled the movement. So it is working. So going inside my code now, I can now go in and say, I want to yield return null again, just to skip another frame. And then I just simply want to set the player controller uh, disable movement to false. So we now enable the movement back on again. So by doing this, I can simply go in and say, I want to you know, I want to move, I press, and then, you know, I'm still moving afterwards. I can keep pressing when I jump down, just so we teleport back. And as you can see, I'm still moving after we teleport. So essentially, this is how we can go in and make sure that the movement of the player doesn't get overwritten somehow with the teleportation. And it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a neat way to know how to do this type of thing. Like I said, in this case here, you know, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to do all of this in my particular example here, because it would work either way with the teleportation. Um, but if you ever run into a situation where certain parts of your code is kind of like overwriting each other, then this is the way you can actually add a, a frame delay so it doesn't happen at the same time. But now let's try and do something a little bit different because right now we have done, you know, a little bit of code and essentially it's doing the exact same thing as before we added in the coroutine because it is working without the coroutine as well in this particular example here. So let's actually go ahead and do something that we can actually see the effect of. So what I'm going to do is instead of saying yield return null, I'm going to say yield return new wait for whoops wait for seconds you can see we actually have a couple of different options here we're just going to talk about wait for seconds today parentheses and then inside the parentheses i can actually add in a certain amount of time that i want to happen before it continues the script inside the core scene so what i can say here is i want to add in let's say three seconds so just say three essentially uh, we could also do something like 3.5 just to say you can also add in a float timer in here. So right now this is three and a half seconds. So what is going to happen is if I were to go inside my unity again and press play, once I hit the space key, it is going to wait three and a half seconds. So 
space, waiting, and then it teleports. So essentially you can add in a timer in this type of way to, to allow for time to happen before something happens inside your game. So, you know, it, it's pretty cool. I just press space again, I'm gonna wait, and it teleports back again. So that's, that's just kind of cool, I think. And again, there might be many different examples you might be able to think of inside your games that you can do something with, you know, time delay. For example, if you shoot an enemy and he has to get like disabled for a certain amount of seconds before he starts following the player again, then you can do that using a coroutine in order to get that accomplished. Now, just to kind of show you how to stop a coroutine, because let's say I start the coroutine and, oh, something happens inside the game that has to cancel whatever coroutine is running. And there's a couple of different ways we can stop the coroutine. One being that we can actually destroy the game object. So if I were to actually destroy uh, the player game object, then it actually goes in and stops the coroutine from happening. We can also go in and deactivate the player game object by you know, using the set activate and then set equal to false in order to deactivate the, the player. But I think the more optimal solution here that you might be looking for in case you still want to have the player inside the game, but you also want to stop the coroutine is we have something called stop coroutine and we also have something called stop all coroutines. So what we can do here is I can go ahead and create another if statement just to check for another key press, just so we have something to work with. And I'm going to check for a W key press, and that is going to be my cancel coroutine uh, button that I'm going to be using this example here. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll say instead of start coroutine, I'm going to say stop all coroutines with an S behind it. And we don't need to have anything inside the parentheses here because we're stopping all the coroutines. So by doing this, I can actually go back inside my game. And what should happen is I'm going to press space and then three and a half seconds is going to happen and then it's going to teleport. But before those three and a half seconds are actually over, I'm going to press the W key to cancel the teleportation. So I'm going to press play and then I'm going to press the space bar and then W. And then nothing should happen inside our game. So as you can see, when I'm teleporting, we actually canceled the coroutine here. And if I press space again and don't press the W key, it will teleport me after three and a half seconds. So with that said, uh, we can also go in and stop a particular coroutine from happening. In order to do that, we do need to go up at the top here and we need to create a coroutine, coroutine type uh, variable. In this case here, we're just gonna call it A just to give it some kind of name. Or maybe we should call it something that makes sense. Let's say underscore coroutine. Then I'm going to take this coroutine here and inside where I start the coroutine, I'm just simply gonna say coroutine is going to be equal to start coroutine. Then I'm going to take the coroutine and inside my stop coroutine down here, I'm going to instead say stop coroutine with a singular coroutine. I'm just simply gonna paste in the name of that particular uh, field that we created up here. So this is the way to cancel a specific Coroutine. Now you can't just do the same thing as you did with the start coroutine up here and just paste that in here because it's not going to work. Uh, you also can't paste it in and leave out the parentheses or anything like that. It's just going to throw in error. So you do actually need to go in and assign the start coroutine to an actual coroutine field in order for this to work. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and save it, go inside my game. And it's still going to stop my game object from actually teleporting because I'm stopping this particular coroutine from running. So I press the space key and then I press W and then nothing should happen inside the game. It's not going to teleport. And we essentially just canceled the coroutine from happening. So this is essentially how you can go in and use a coroutine in order to delay certain frames or certain time inside your game to create many different types of features and functionalities inside your game. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.